Hello everyone. So today we start with a new chapter, which is chapter six. Okay, chapter six is on Z transform. Okay, so basically Z transform is used for discrete time signal only. Okay, for continuous time signal, okay, you need to use Fourier transform. Okay, let's go to the introduction of Z transform. Okay, so frequency domain representation of discrete time signal and LTI discrete time system are made possible with the use of DTFT. Okay, this one you learn in chapter 3. Okay, in chapter 3, you learn on you have continuous time signal and then you have discrete time signal. Continuous time signal, if you still remember, it is ST. ST is your continuous time signal. But when you look for discrete time signal, it is represented by XN. Okay, so in this, in chapter 3, okay, the frequency domain of XT you can find through Fourier transform. Okay, which is CTFT. But for XN, you need to find DTFT for you to determine its frequency domain okay but in this chapter we gonna look at the z transform of xn okay okay next okay why we need to have z transform why we don't just uh, concentrate on fourier transform okay this is another this is the reason However, not all discrete time signal, for example, you need, for example, you need step sequence are guaranteed to have DTFT because of convergence condition. Okay, so basically, you need step. If you still remember, you need step is basically is either from negative infinity to zero or from zero to infinity or maybe two-sided sequence from minus n to n so basically uh, because of that okay because we don't have the limited range i mean we ha we don't have the limited region for u n that is why uh, it cannot be solved by dtft all right so as a result for these cases we are not able to use such frequency domain characterization okay so because of that convergence condition set transform is introduced okay so if you look at this slide okay we have dtft is given by g exponent j omega summation of g n exponent minus j omega n okay so certain function of g n will not allow the above summation to converge okay especially when we look for u n therefore we need to find a way of overcoming this non-convergence so how to do that we need to do set transform okay so let us modify the signal gn to gn r n r minus n so by definition okay therefore okay we have this equation and then we replace r as minus j omega with z okay so basically we replace this with this okay and then uh, sorry okay so if you look at here this is actually your z transform function i mean the z transform equation okay so next okay so if you already replace this one then you can see that it is actually equivalent to z transform equation okay so another way at looking at the transform gz equal to summation 
gn z minus n so z transform is the dtft of the modified signal gn r minus n where z equal to r as monogio omega so by choosing the right value of r we can make the summation above to converge the values of r that make this convergence possible is known as region of convergence so in z transform in this chapter you gonna have you need to look for region of convergence okay so region of convergence it is is described by a circle or annular rings in the z plane okay so you can look at here okay so roc is referring to a circular ring okay if you look here this is the circular ring okay so this is the circular ring so basically for example okay this is um uh, this is permanent okay unit circle value is always equal to one okay that is why you have this one you have this circle okay you have this circle to represent that it is at radius one okay okay so what happen if you your pulse value is alpha and beta so we have our alpha circle and then we have our beta circle okay alpha means our first pole value beta is again our pulse value okay so each pulse value is represented by a circle okay okay next set transform of finite sequences okay we have the general equation of z transform and then now we're looking at if let's say we have gn is finite for example we have this gn equal to 1 minus 2 3 minus 1 0 3 7 so if you look at the range the range from here we know that it is two-sided sequence so basically if we refer to this diagram it is two-sided sequence why because of the value the value of gn is from minus 3 to 3 okay so from here we know that the roc for gz is the entire z plane except z equal to zero and z equal to infinity why except zero because it is actually in the region of minus three to three why um why except z equal to infinity again because of the value of z is in between minus three to three only okay all right next if gn is finite for example gn the range is from 0 to 3 so if you look at the range it is actually referring to right-sided sequence okay so if you look at the right-sided sequence you look at this illustration it is 0 to 3 meaning that it is actually only at the positive side okay so what happened if you look here okay gz is the entire z plane except z equal to zero yes because of okay it is right sided so it's it it won't consider the zero okay but it's considered at infinity because it is right sided again okay next gn is 1 minus 2 3 minus 1 the range is minus 3 to 0 so from the range we know that it is left-sided sequence so if you look at the illustration it is from minus 3 to 0 so basically it is left-sided so it, it just consists of values uh, at the negative side so because of that is considered the z equal to zero but then it's not considered the roc at z equal to infinity why because of at infinity we don't have the value right okay 
So next, the rational Z transform. Okay, so basically, for rational Z transform, this part is just to show that we have for you to to your transfer function must consist of numerator and denominator part. Okay, so when I say numerator, numerator is the upper part. Denominator is your lower part. Okay, so basically HZ is formed based on the SN and YN relationship. So basically SN, uh, the, the difference equation between SN and YN. So how to get HZ? HZ equal to YZ over HZ. Alright, so basically... From here, we know that Hz consists. Uh, Hz is actually consists of the polynomial. Okay, two polynomial. One polynomial is referring to numerator part. Another polynomial is referring to denominator part. Okay. So if you look here again, Z equal to uh, e1 are uh, m zeros of hz on z plane and z equal to lambda 1 are uh, n poles of hz okay meaning that when you have hz transfer function okay hz transfer function consists of two polynomials okay one for numerator the upper part is numerator numeri numerator Lower part is denominator. Okay, so basically, how to get the values of zeros? You need to find from your numerator part. But the post value, you can find from denominator part. Okay, so how to get the value? You need to do factorization. That is why in previous slide, we have this one. Okay, because of we need for you to make your life easy to find what is your pulse. Okay, this is your pulse value and uh, your zeros value. You can get your zeros value. And then from here, you can get your pulse value. Okay. Alright, so let's move to example number two. So, this is the question. Okay, we have the Z transform of mu n. Where mu n equal to 1 over 1 minus Z minus 1. Which is equal to Z over Z minus 1. Okay. So, for modu uh, modulus Z greater than 1. Okay. So, if you look at this range. Okay. Modulus Z greater than 1. Meaning that it is right-sided sequence okay so basically you know that okay why it is right sided because of okay it is uh, the the you look at the post value okay z equal z minus 1 equal to 0 so z equal to 1 so in term of roc modulus z is greater than 1 okay meaning that it is referring to right sided sequence okay so having a 0 at z equal to 0 and a pole at z equal to 1 okay here z equal to 1 minus 2.4 z minus 1 plus 2.88 z minus 2 over 1 minus 0 0.8 z minus 1 plus 0 0.64 z minus 2 so this one is a little bit um, complicated because of you are dealing with complex sequence complex number so what happened for you to find your poles and zeros you need to really uh, expert to use your own calculator yeah okay so basically uh, 
the zeros and poles value is 0 0.4 plus t plus minus t 0 0.6928 so how to get to get the poles value again you need to refer to deno denominator part but for zeros you need how to find your zeros value you can you need to refer to numerator part okay okay so next we look for the z transform and associated pole zero plot for a right sided exponential sequence so for you to answer z transform question you can refer to the formula sheet uh, it is in table number three okay so table number three and four it is on z transform okay so if you look at the formula sheet okay we have two function for z, uh, in z transform okay one function is when alpha n u n so the z transform of alpha n u n is similar to the z transform of minus alpha n u minus n minus 1 so what is the difference of them so basically if you look at these two function the z transform is same the trans the z transform of alpha n u n is 1 over 1 minus alpha z minus 1 same goes to minus alpha n u minus n minus 1 it is also 1 over 1 minus alpha z minus 1 so the difference between them is actually the region of convergence so if you look at this uh, equation i mean this z transform alpha n u n equal to 1 over 1 minus alpha z minus 1 the z transform of alpha n u n for this one is only meant for modulus z greater than alpha modulus alpha okay okay if you look at this diagram you can see it is right sided sequence why right sided okay in z transform okay if you don't want to look at your formula sheet also can okay but you need to really understand for z transform okay we have roc so we have right sided region we have left sided left sided region we also have two sided region but for right sided region when the region is right sided region means all your poles will approach to right so for the right side the re the right region is represented by un Or mu n okay how to get the value of alpha alpha is actually your pulse value okay so where to get that it is from denominator part okay so pulse value you can determine from denominator part okay okay next okay next we move to minus alpha n u minus n minus one okay this is the left sided region why left sided region because of your modulus modulus z is less than modulus alpha okay so basically if you look at this denominator part you know that your pulse value is equal to your pulse value is z equal to alpha okay so means for this condition your alpha okay for this roc it is left sided region so your alpha will approach to left okay so for left sided region it is represented by minus u minus m minus 1 or minus mu minus m minus 1 
Alright, so basically left and right sided region is represented by a function. For right sided region, it is represented by un. Okay, for left sided region, it is represented by minus u, minus n, minus 1.